Jung insisted that psychic energy or libido cannot appear in consciousness except in the form of images. This provides an apparently modern scientific understanding of such images, that is, they are products of the deeper levels of the unconscious psyche, emerging either spontaneously in dreams and visions or through deliberate invocation, and they give shape to otherwise incommunicable psychic realities. One such method to invoke the unconscious psychic images is active imagination. The method involves a specific type of meditation, deep concentration and emotional engagement with the images that have arisen in dreams, reveries, emotional eruptions, waking fantasies or deliberately invoke altered states of consciousness. The imagination is understood as a kind of gateway or threshold into ordinarily inaccessible psychic realms and as a means of giving shape to otherwise nascent psychic realities. In 1916, Jung described the entry point for active imagination as a turbulent emotional state. You must make the emotional state the basis or starting point of the procedure. You must make yourself as conscious as possible of the mood you are in, sinking yourself in it without reserve and noting down on paper all the fantasies and other associations that come up. Fantasy must be allowed the freest possible play, yet not in such a manner that it leaves the orbit of its object namely the emotional effect. This description, written three years after Jung's break from Freud, is sometimes viewed as Jung's version of the psychoanalytic technique of free association, which Freud first described in 1893. But Jung carefully distinguished between the two, describing active imagination as a sequence of fantasies produced by deliberate concentration. It is not a question of the free association recommended by Freud for the purpose of dream analysis, but of elaborating the fantasy by observing the further fantasy material that adds itself to the fragment in a natural manner. The purpose of active imagination is thus not to provide material for an intellectual analysis of repressed conflicts, but rather to allow that which is hidden and unknown to express itself in its own language, that is, the language of images. Dion Fortune, a British occultist contemporary with Jung, writes, the uninstructed person thinks he is developing psychism when he sees elves, archangels, and elementals with the inner eye. The instructed person knows that he is using a technique of the imagination in order to clothe with visible form intangible things that would otherwise be imperceptible to his consciousness. It is the precise nature of these intangible things that has been the source of the greatest controversy around Jung's ideas about the unconscious. Fortune acquired many of her concepts from Jung himself. She used Jung's model to support her belief that occultism and analytical psychology were complementary modes of exploring the invisible realms. Although Jung's expositions on active imagination are psychological, they often attribute the qualities of divinity to the collective unconscious, reflecting a panentheistic understanding of symbols as complex waves of associations that transcend the perceived opposites and paradoxically conjoin in a single and apparently discrete image, object, word, number, or glyph the inner and the outer, the material and the psychic, within an unus mundus or unified cosmos which Plato in the 4th century BCE called the world soul.